Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'll be your host today as we talk about prevention and preparation for all those little surprises that life has to offer us. Today, my guest is a colleague of mine, an author, and also a very skilled physical therapist, Christine Linders. Welcome, Christine. Thank you so much, Tish, for having me on today. Oh, I'm so happy to have you back. Uh, so when we were talking about what we were going to be having a conversation about today, we you brought up how about... Um, I keep on wanting to say preparation, but you say prevention, right? And so as I felt into that, I thought, okay, prevention. And what is a bigger sense of that, right? It's awareness. What do you think about yeah, it? That's funny. Well, it's funny when you said preparation, I thought of, well, and in awareness, I thought, well, prevention is awareness. And when you're thinking about preparing for something, you're making sure you, you have these things in order to attain or to achieve or to become this. And so when you think of prevention, it's a very similar thing is most people have something happen. And like from my standpoint as a physical therapist, I think of pain or an injury or something like that. And so that happens in life, but your awareness before that can prevent you from having that injury or like the awareness before would prepare you to deflect that injury from happening or prepare your body, prepare your mind, prepare everything or to prevent something from happening. Not like you fell and you broke your leg, but more an injury that you don't know what's going to happen because of something that is stewing in your body at the time. Ooh. Whoa, stewing in your, what do you, what do you mean by that? Stewing in your body? Because what came up for me, I'm sorry, just let me no, that's good. I'm asking is because so what came up for me when you said that was how do we, you know, sometimes we don't want to prevent the injuries because the injuries are how we learn. That's how we go through the this life experience of learning. So um maybe it can also help you to be able to heal that and have the awareness of the healing kind of more to the surface. So that it's not buried so deep and you can recover, you can heal faster even, right? When you do come across yeah. this. So what do you yeah, mean by something growing? Let's talk about that. So I think of, so I think of a habit, you know, we all have habits and habits are translate into movement and patterns in your body. So for example, someone may be sitting at their desk all day crossing their left leg over their right. And you can see what it does to my head. You can see what it does to my body. So if you sit like that and work all day long, everything on this side, I think I'm pointing to the right side. No, I'm looking at the camera. Everything on this side is going to get short and everything on this side is going to get long and weak. But also you see the difference in my shoulders and my spine is bending to the right. So there'll be more compression on the right side of your spine and more strain on the left side of your spine. So if you have awareness to the fact that you have a habit like this, or some people sit on their sofa with their legs off to one side and they turn this way all the time to look at the TV. Compounding that over five and 10 years, you are developing a habit and a movement pattern that makes your body be in a faulty position. And then people will all of a sudden go, I blew up my back. I don't know how. Or I bent over to pick something up and I blew up my back. Or, oh gosh, I'm getting migraines and my neck hurts so bad, but I didn't trip. I didn't fall. I didn't have a, a car accident. I didn't cough and sneeze and jerk my neck. I didn't have a new baby. I'm looking down all the time. They did nothing and they have this horrible injury. And so the awareness, which is like the prevention or the preparedness, the preparedness is what I like to say. Something brewing in your body is something we don't know about. Like, you know, a tendency that we have that puts our body into an altered position all the time that is bad for us, but we don't know. And if you call your awareness to it, then that little really big injury that you had didn't have to happen. If you said, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I'll just, I'll spend some time doing it the other way. Or, oh my gosh, wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I'll shift my sofa so I don't hurt myself right. undeservingly. Like, you know, you didn't, again, just didn't trip and fall and that's an accident. And now you have this injury or whatever, you know, those kind of right. things playing sports, you're going to injure yourself. And sometimes you can't prevent those. They just happen. 
So I really like how you spoke to the, com- you just said compounded. Um, and this brings something to light that we've spoken about in the past is that compound effect. And what I like to say, and of course, with my my clients, my patients, I oftentimes will say, you know, it's that repetitive motion. That's what it is. And when you maybe change your repetitive motion, then you're going to be able to change what that looks like in your body and what that looks like as far as pain um, and how that lives in your body. However, the compound effect speaks to that perfect storm. So it's perfect that you use the word brewing, right? Because doesn't a storm brew? <laughs> it's like, so, I love it. Right? I don't know what the name for it, but it came. Right. So we're going to have to use that somewhere, right? The storm is brewing and then it's perfect. And what I mean by a perfect storm is that this happened and that happened. And so you do, you're sitting on the couch this way, or you're like, for me, I've been really bringing my awareness to my shoulders, right? And as I work, my shoulders are forward, but also, I mean, I have emotional things that have affected me having my shoulders forward, protecting my heart, maybe keeping it closed, keeping those insecurities close to me and not letting people see them. And even though to many, I come off as a super secure person, there have been a lot of times in my life where that hasn't been the case. So for me, when I'm, I'm keep on going, oh yeah. And it's not so much drop your shoulders and pull them back. Like this feels so contrived, you know, it feels, doesn't that feel, but if I just feel like open my heart up, lift it up to the sky, uh, that drops my shoulders immediately and opens it up. So it's that perfect storm. It could be emotional mixed with the physical, mixed with maybe stress, right? Happening that yeah. or anxiety. Um, so that I'm really happy you spoke to that. Do you have anything else to add to that? Well, I, about what you just said, I like what you did, which is like, um, you forced your shoulder blades back and said that feels contrived. It feels forced. And then you also lifted your heart to the ceiling. And I think what's interesting to distinguish is that when you, and this is for people, there's so many ways to have emotion happen in our body using different ways and different muscles. Now, when you shove your shoulder blades back you use the muscles on the back and you clench them right it's like tense and people do say oh god that feels unnatural is that what you want me to do but when you lift your heart it doesn't use those muscles to do that it uses different muscles to do that so you've accomplished the same thing in essence which is shoulders are back your posture is better your chest is up but you didn't shove them back you lifted them back and it's it's very funny ways that we can move our body like you can turn your head to the right for people that have a stiff neck you could turn your head to the right and if your neck muscles are like tense you ain't gonna turn very far right i like that you ain't gonna turn i used some sliding there or you could take your left leg and push your foot into the ground and then your body will turn and your neck will follow now you just use the different muscle action to allow your cervical area to rotate that doesn't involve your neck muscles and so I wanted to mention that because you just showed everybody right away there's two different ways. There's many different ways. There's two different ways to open up without like making it feel so forced and so unnatural. So I, I that's what I wanted to mention. And I you did ask me to speak to something. I just forgot what it was because I was so excited that you mentioned that point. I wanted to share it to people because a lot of people go, well, how am I going to turn my head like this? It's like, oh, well, if you... you push down with your foot, then your body turns and your head follows without using these muscles that are tightened at the time. Right. And I mean, so I feel like coming to you and when you've helped me through so many of my, my injuries or quote unquote ailments that I've had uh, over the years, you are so skilled with your knowing of what and how the body works that you continue to find ways for me to be able to correct or find a new pattern of movement, right? And so I feel like you are the medicine for 
me to get better. And so that's a different way of looking at physical therapy, right? Because a lot of times we go, oh, that's just therapy. Yeah, well, what is therapy then, right? Therapy is medicine. So let's cut up what it is. Now, there's another thing. What is an injury? What's an ailment? That is medicine too, because before that injury or ailment or whatever the pain, how the pain is showing up in your body, which is really just your body communicating, hey, pay attention. This is something's happening here. I'm trying to talk to you. Um, So that can be the medicine as well. So being prepared to listen to those and having all of your medicines in a line in ready to be able to be activated is super important. So I, I appreciate you and your skills. And I'd like to ask you a question about, so say I'm going to start surfing and I've never surfed before. I'm from Iowa and there's no ocean there, but I've been watching these movies and I want to go surf and I'm tired of being cold in the winter and Hawaii looks like a great place to go. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to start surfing. So as far as my muscles go, how would I prepare for that adventure? That's a really good question. That's a, that's a very loaded question. Um, (laughs) No, I think well, this, because in my brain, all of a sudden it's going, like, what do they need? What do they need at their neck? What do they need at their back? What do they need at their shoulders? What do they need at their hamstrings? What do they need at their ankles? And so if you're going to start surfing, the first thing you need to be able to do is paddle. And I, I always think, how can they now paddle and not hurt themselves? Let's say they had a desk job, like you were talking about, you know, keeping our, our heart protected and keeping our insecurities close when we're feeling down and what that does to our posture, it, it rounds it forward. And how you lift your chest. And so many of us do that, that we lift our chest and be like, no, everything's okay. I'm okay. I'm enough. You know, you, you do that now, now you're going to learn how to surf and you haven't done it before. And you need to be able to have the right amount of this mid body, your thoracic, your torso extension to be able to paddle on the surfboard. So you don't damage your shoulders because you need to have full range of motion at your shoulders in order to paddle. But if you are rounded in this area, you're not going to get that. And you're going to paddle for a week and all of a sudden go, wow, my shoulders are hurting. Surfing's bad for me. Or, or your neck, if your neck is more swayed, you know, like this from you looking down at your phone or your laptop or hunching over a laptop or something like that, then you're just going to increase the compression on the nerves in your neck. And you're going to end up with either headaches or tingling down one arm. So I think of those things from the upper body standpoint, and that will then impact your low back while you're paddling. So let's say you are you have good posture, you have good range of motion, they sit up well, they're undo, I always say, they undo their desk job or as us, our manual therapy, forward posture, that kind of thing. They're stretching their chest, they're able to do all that. Then the problem is, is do you have enough hamstring length to be able to pop up? And that is something that I find in people when their hamstrings are tight, they injure their back when they're trying to serve. As far as preparedness. So so what about like doing it while you're not in the ocean? Because once you get in the ocean, then those insecurities are going to happen like straight away because, and you're going to be like, oh, and you're going to try to balance and you're going to be worried about drowning and getting in people's way. And then you're going to panic and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. I've been there. So (laughs) <laughs> so like at their home on their living room floor or their bedroom floor what do you suggest like I've always said okay try to do some tricep um strength building right and yes. maybe do some pop-ups or yep absolutely yeah so I Definitely like um, how I learned was I had to get to do the pop-ups I had to get down on my stomach and press up, like pretend like you're paddling and then press up and then try to slide your legs through so you know that you have enough flexibility. But are you talking about if they already have the good posture and everything like that or? Well, I mean, I'm just saying that there's there's different components. So there's the strength and maybe what I mean, what about if they start with the pop ups and they're doing that and then then they start feeling, oh, there's pain in my neck or I I'm now I feel stuff. So then that could also be another aspect of preparedness, right? 
Yeah. So they're bringing their awareness to it before they're throwing themselves in and having more of a gentle approach, <laughs> right? With e gentle with yourself. In grace, right? Exactly. Yeah. I heard something funny. It's funny the gentle with yourself. Um for 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 one, uh, I would say like the preparedness as far as strength and flexibility. I like a lot of exercises that where you I don't know if you could see me. Like let's say your head is forward. If you're gonna stretch your neck, you could tuck your chin down. But if you're gonna strengthen your neck, you could tuck your chin down and push into your hand. So it's a stretch and a strengthen. You can also clasp your hands behind your head this way, tuck your chin down. Press your head into your hands and resist, and then squeeze your shoulder blades back. That's a stretch, a strengthen, and now you're getting retraction, which works on the muscles that you need to keep your back up while you're paddling. So I like to do those things. You need rotation to swim, and so uh, lifting your left elbow up to the ceiling will stretch your thorax, which will allow your shoulders to get full range, and will also let your torso rotate when you're paddling, and when you have to be able to rotate to get your legs through. So those are some things that I'll tell people. And you can prepare for surfing while you're sitting at your desk. You're and what I'm noticing well, too. Yeah. What I'm noticing too is I'm trying as I'm mirroring you here is that if you do it in front of a mirror, you can kind of see like even just with the tilt my chin down, and then uh, okay. So what was it? I tilt my chin down. Okay. Yeah. Tilt your chin down and then push back into your hand. Push back into my hands. Okay, so even just that, look at my neck muscles. So Thanks to you, right? Yes. Yeah, look at that. And then if I kind of try to extend my spine, which this is a big one for me, but I don't normally look while I'm doing it. But wow, I mean, you can see the different muscles engaging. Yes. Huh, that's incredible. I think I need to start doing that in the mirror because... It's great to do in the mirror, awareness. <laughs> right. System. Like, yeah. system it's funny, right? Like there's stuff that your nervous system knows. Like if I was sitting like this all day long and I see this every day, your nervous system feels like you're straight. And then I'll tell people to sit up straight and they'll maybe do like kind of like that. And they'll say, I'm sitting up straight. And then I'm like, can I have your phone? And I'll take a picture with their phone. And they're like, oh, oh. And then they kind of like get up straight. So the nervous system is interested in because the nervous system sets as the normal what we do all the time, and that's your set point. But when right. you make your eyes see that you are not straight or that this muscle is bulging more than this or that you notice your chin's a little tilted this way when you push back, your brain's like, oh, my gosh, wow, wait, I see that. And then you can kind of like, look at Buki. She's figuring it out right now. You could you could straighten yourself out. when Wait, you that was the cat pose. And I know. It's time to. Good job. But, that, but looking in the mirror is great because it, it gives input to your nervous system that your normal isn't aligned. Right. It's not necessarily natural, the right. way your body is meant to be. So let's move on. I want to get through a couple of different body parts. Um, okay. We just did neck and kind of upper body. What about the low back? You were talking about how you sit in your chair and sitting up. So what are some tools and tricks that you could do to be able to bring your awareness and prepare to be able to combat any of those pains that might happen in that low back if, say, you were at a sitting job or you drive a lot, right? Yes. Um, what's like a couple of simple things? So one of the biggest things I have, a, coincidentally, I have them right here, but uh, one of the biggest things with sitting and, and people with back pain is that it's very hard to maintain the neutral position of your spine, which is the back has a backwards curve. When we sit, we like to hunch just a little bit. Like it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I just rounded my low back. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do when you're sitting is to be able to sit and take that thing off your table. Like don't, Force yourself to sit up straight and extend your back so much. Use a a uh, a pillow. I have these little pillows all over my house. I have one, oh, I have one right behind me. Actually, I was looking for it and a pillow. So, like, if you're sitting, I don't know if you'll see it. See my what? I think you can you can see a little bit, right? Nope. Okay, here I'll do this for now, and then I'll fix it afterward. Just a little. You just put uh, 
you could put a pillow in your low back and you have to scoop your butt all the way back. And right there, I just supported my back and I no longer have to have conscious awareness to try to maintain my spine in a perfect position. If you're finding that that's not enough, and this is me when I'm driving, I'd use a pillow like this. It's 12 inches by four. I actually had a patient make them for me because they're so perfect and I couldn't find anywhere to buy them. And I had a patient's wife make them for me. Is you put it in your thoracic spine like this, and this is what I use in my car. And what it does is what you said, Tish, it's lifting my chest, my shoulders immediately go back and then I drive versus the low back pillow doesn't move these back. These can still be here. As soon as you do this, then I'm up and I can drive and then my neck's in the perfect position and I no longer have to think about how I sit. So it's very important when you're sitting to use these props, like especially in the car. Nowadays, cars have the seat head pushed forward. I believe because they're trying to stop people from getting these terrible neck injuries from whiplash. I've had it twice and it's, it's um, damaged my neck uh, in a very, very bad way. But I, so I think that's why they're doing it. But when they do that, now you're forward. As soon as you take this vertical pillow and you put it in there, your head can sit normal and the, the seat rest, the headrest will hit your head where it needs to be. That's such a great point because I, I mean, this isn't safe, so don't do this. <laughs> Anybody don't do this, but I took the headrest off and I turned it around and I put it back in. So it's tilted way back. So if I did go back, I would completely get whiplash again for the yes. seventh, eighth time. So you too, right? And that, yep. that's an example of But that. I didn't know about the thoracic spine pillow. And I use a, I use a, uh, roller under my, like in between my sits bones and my, yeah. and my sacrum. Is that kind of the, is that also, would you do it in addition to that, all those, those other two pillows, or would you maybe choose the low back pillow or the roller? You put, you put it under your sit bones like this to lift you up in your seat. Hi, yeah. Yeah. And it yeah, sort so of goes I, like this. It sort of tilts. It tilts you forward. Yeah. Forward. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good too. I have a, in my car, I have a towel that's in the back to lift my butt up a little bit because a lot of the seats are angled this way and they tend to make you lean forward as a result. And I've had like yourself, every injury in the book. So I prop my surroundings so that I can be pain-free while on my activities. Prop so I will. My surroundings. <laughs> that, yes. Prop my surroundings. Is that in your yeah. book? <laughs> That not be a quote in your book. I'll, I'll watch this. I'll write it. No, but I'll put it in there. I'll put the profits around it. And brewing will be in there. Yes. You don't so, know what's brewing in your body until you see it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And as you have helped me over the years, one thing that I've always appreciated about how you help, not just me, but many of my patients come to you. I refer people to you all the time is that you look at my body not as, okay, this is the way a low back acts. You look at me as, oh, wait, no, this is the way your low back is acting. And that is so important because everybody's so individual and so unique. So with any of these tools and tricks that we're giving you or that Christine is giving you right now, uh, it's important that, hey, if it doesn't work, give it a week, do you think? About a week? Yeah. And then if it doesn't work after a week and you're getting way more pain or something, adjust it. Move it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be specific because everybody isn't the same. Everybody is different. We are. We're all different and unique. And that's such a huge point to, to say to everybody is because there's a lot of and one of my one of my friends said this to me and she had heard herself doing yoga. She's been on the show and she said, I was trying to fit myself into what everybody else could do. And I thought I should be more flexible and I can do that pose and I should be able to do this. And I and then she realized, wait, we're all unique and we all have different things that we can do amazingly and different things that we can't do that somebody else might be able to amazingly. And if you if you the vertical, the vertical pillow I have found works for and uh, but sometimes people need like what you need or what I need is I need to put something under my butt too. Or some people will need to throw 
a sweatshirt in their low back and then shove the pillow in between. I've had to do that before when my back was really bad. Now I don't need it anymore. So mess with your propage because if you have scoliosis, I have scoliosis. It's not huge, but if you have scoliosis and it's big, you might need your vertical pillow to be a little bit off to one side where the rib hub is to shift your spine or prop your, you know, prop yourself while you're sitting on the sofa and stick something under the one butt cheek that then makes your nervous system set your body straight. So we are all unique and different. But these, the bottom line is, is yes, use these to set your environment up so that your body has success while you're in a position that's going to be prolonged. Like I know you and me were always on the table and I, I have to, I have to point my toes outward when I'm massaging and loosening up someone's back or doing some joint moves because of the back injury that I had years ago. And then my curve compounding onto it. There's that word again. If I turn my right foot straight and I have to twist, it sets off my back. So now I adjust and I open up my feet and then I'm fine. But I'm not going to go telling everyone, oh, this is how you have to do joint moves because my body is very different based on my injury experience and my scoliosis. And so it took me a long time to figure that out, though, I have to say, even as a physical therapist with myself, I was thinking, gosh, I have to turn my foot out. And somebody said, well, turn your foot out then. And I went, yeah, great. Yeah, you know, right. And now you've taught me to turn my foot in. And um, I've also had other people teach me to push that big toe down. And that yes. helped me immensely with my injuries, with hiking and running and walking and doing all the things that I choose to do. That's great. That's great. And that's the thing. That's what we all want as health practitioners, right? Is we want someone like me to be like, oh my gosh, well, that helps you to say, wait, somebody told me to push my foot down, my toe down, and now it helps me with hiking. And you just activated your body in a more, so that altered muscles don't start to fire to do the same job. And that's what could lead us to the injury that is brewing in your body that you're going to then learn from so that you can actually probably correct more things in your body as a result. Like if you come in to see me with your foot and I'm like, oh, but wait, what's going on with your back? What's going on with that shoulder? That injury just gave you a big opportunity to heal other things in your whole entire body and be. Yes. Yes. Uh, so it's funny because as I'm sitting here, I was like, oh, I crossed my leg. I uncrossed my leg because I've got you right in front of me. I crossed this. No, no, I uncrossed that. <laughs> so I want to talk. Okay. So one quick little thing that I wanted to bring up is with the, um, the low back also mm -hmm. one of the big tools, and this is the tagline of your book that you just wrote that is going to be coming out soon, people, by the way. And we yeah. will share that with you as soon. We'll have to have you back on after your book comes out so that we can make sure that everybody has access to that is suck it in. Right? Suck, suck it in. in. And so when I tell people suck it in, I say don't suck in air. You're pulling your belly button in towards your spine. You're sucking your stomach in. So I'm doing it right now. And you could hear it maybe change the sound of my voice because this muscle attaches a little bit to your diaphragm on the side. But when you do that, you stabilize your spine from the inside out and you can get rid of your low back pain forever. So that <laughs> is coming out a couple months. Yes. And what about, um, I believe that I added your YouTube on some of the information with the show, but how can people find you in order to be able, because you have multitude of videos out there for plantar fasciitis, for neck pain, low back pain, shoulder pain, all of the things. And even one of my clients, before she could get in to see you, which it took actually a couple of months for her to get in to see you. She, I told her, go and start looking at her videos. And she went and started looking at your videos and she started doing your exercises off of your videos before she ever came and saw you. So she was prepared to receive your medicine. <laughs> so you know what she was? Okay. What's that? Thank you. Thank you for that. I was just going to say thank you for that. Because that makes me feel my heart sing to hear people helping themselves, preparing themselves and, you know, way that is things that I provided out there with the why I did it, you know, so thank you for that. So how do people find you? Okay, so the easiest way to find me is if you go to YouTube and you type in my name, just Christine Linders, 
I have a YouTube channel. Um, the oh, amazing thing about Think Tech Hawaii is I had a show for four years and they will get lumped into my show that I did for the first three that's Movement Matters and the other one that's Physical Therapy for a Better Life. And their shows just like your amazing show where it's 25 to 28 minutes of packed advice and videos where you can watch that. So that's where I send most people because it's great. It'll be on the hip, on the back, on the knee, on your scoliosis, how to get ready for surfing, golf, everything. So I tell people to go to the YouTube channel. You can also go to Instagram, right? I've been posting a little bit more lately, but the YouTube is the best place because in each show, I pack about five to 10 videos of instructional videos for you within the show. Even when I'm interviewing someone, I will throw, here's how you do X. And then I will have a video. Here's how you do this. And I'll have a video. So I do like to send people to, to YouTube to watch these amazing Think Tech shows uh, because it's, it's great. They're the best, I think. <laughs> awesome. So everybody go to YouTube and look up Christine Lunders, L-Y-N-D-E-R-S. And um, go ahead and help yourself before you go. You can do that to be able to research how your body responds to these different exercises and medicines to um, be able to prepare you for life's little surprises <laughs> that uh, may compound over time. So, Christine, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, it's always a joy and a pleasure. And I look forward to the next time that we're able to meet in person or on camera. Thank you so much. This was so amazing. I'm so grateful to you. Thanks for all of your wisdoms and your skills. And also, thank you to Think Tech Hawaii. And to all of our donors and our sponsors for being able to provide a platform like this so that we can all be able to have these conversations and discussions and explore how we can be our best selves. Until next time, aloha.